Yes, eight teams won and eight teams lost in round five of the 2024 season. But let's be honest, people. Some players, teams, and coaches won and lost a little bit more than the rest. So let's go through the biggest winners and losers from round five. Let's go. Going to give a big win to Cam Rayner with his stats there on the screen, but what this screamed to me and why I think a lot of fans get really annoyed with their team is that this is what he should have been doing from the start. Now, part of that is on Cam and part of it is on the Brisbane coaching staff for not putting him there in the first place. He was a number one draft pick and a midfielder. And he performs in the midfield. Well, holy shit balls! Who is shocked here? Now, does this kind of count as a loss for Chris Fagan? Maybe a little bit. But, you know, you could also argue we should do the same with Matty Nix and Isaac Rankin. Absolutely. John Longmire with Isaac Heaney. <laughs> for sure. Which is why fans pull their hair out as to why bad teams that start off really badly don't change things up. They did, and how did Adelaide and Brisbane go on the weekend? Makes this video either the reason why these teams are going well, in which case I'll happily take credit for that, happy dance for does, or just common sense, which is probably the answer, but, you know, I, I could use some self-esteem, so let's go with that, shall we? But the other part that's so important is the 80% efficiency as well. That can't be the thing that falls by the wayside either. That is the stat that is super duper important in this. It's incredible. That is what he needs to do. And it's not as if he needs to be 100% in the midfield. What do you do with Dunkley, Neil, and Will Ashcroft when he comes back into the side? He's going to be indoctrinated into this Brisbane side over the next eight weeks. So what do you do with Cam there? Well, striking a balance might be the option, but he needs to be midfielder first. And hello, Geordie Degoe, who figured this out via Collingwood about two years ago, and that's paying off quite nicely, even if his form hasn't been super duper to start 2024. But a massive win for Cam Rayner. This potential series, if you guys enjoy it, is all about celebrating the good things, and he was definitely one of them. A fantastic win by Brisbane. The scoreboard flattered Melbourne in the end, but the Lions, they're back in form, and it's good to see. We are going to give a loss to Bevo, and I am going to get to their opponents in just a little bit, but what the hell was he talking about? In his presser, the three All-Australians as subs, pretty much everything the mainstream footy media has spoken about, I agree with here. And look, at some point, the Bulldogs are just going to have to go, Bevo, 2016 was too far ago. We love everything that you've done for us. You will forever be a Bulldogs immortal. But at this point, we've got to go in a different direction. They just nearly have to at this point. Surely, surely, surely they have to at this point. It's extraordinary to think that they can keep going like this. Now, the list is not that good, and I think Bevo knows that, but it's extraordinary how their top-end talent is just not getting them anywhere. But what I will say in this is, why is Bont excluded from any criticism here? At least Bevo is a premiership coach. Bont is not a premiership captain right now. And what I'm saying is, is that Bevo does deserve a lot of the criticism. I'm not saying it should be 50-50. I'm also not saying it shouldn't be 100-0, right? Because at what point do we go, all right, let's kick this thing into motion. Bont right now, if his career ended this year, he would have one flag not as a skipper and no Brownlows, which for his talent doesn't make sense. And his 2021 grand final performance was unreal until Melbourne turned the game. So 90-10, does that seem fair? But in the mainstream media, it's 110-0. to zero, And I don't think that's very fair, to be honest. Speaking of Bont, his opponent on the night, going to give a big win to Sammy Durham here. 21 disposals, a bunch of them contested, six clearances and six score involvements. But what he did that was so impressive was that he played Bont front shoulder and wanted to put body pressure on in the contest. Tick, 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 massive win. Now, the AFL.com.au did run with Bont or bust, which I do kind of agree with in a way, but Libba did go down injured. That is a little bit of a problem. Both of them work in tandem so well. They both got taken out of the game, which is probably not the best choice of words, but I don't really know how else to word it in that way, and the dogs did just not fire a shot at all, but this is all about the Bombers, they were awesome. I wanted to give a massive win for Harry Jones here, who does deserve some love, but Sammy Durham back into the side. They did have him as an inside mid. I was thinking to myself, he's such a good winger, though. Why would you do this? 
This is why. Brad Scott, well played. Sammy Durham, poh, even better played, young man. Well done. So just to continue on that, I am going to give a big tick to the Bombers as a whole. Like I said, no uh, Peter Wright, no Archie Perkins. I don't actually think I said that before, but they didn't have those guys, and they bitched the Bulldogs. No better way of putting it. They bitched the Bulldogs. Again, I thought the scoreboard flattered the Dogs a little bit, and maybe South Australia is just not where the Bombers play their best footy, because outside of South Australia... They're 3-1 and one against three teams that, albeit, might not be the greatest in St. Kilda, Hawthorne, and the Western Bulldogs, but you've still got to win them. And they push Sydney, who at worst to the second-best team in the competition, to five goals, kicked 101 points on them at the SCG. They're in fantastic form. And whilst I don't think Brad Scott is in my Coach of the Year contention just yet, and what he can do to accelerate a group from potential final contenders to real premiership contenders won't happen in 2024, but the groundwork can absolutely be laid. And I don't think Bombers fans, again, outside of the last three quarters against Port Adelaide, could have asked for a much better start. But as a five-week sample size, if you're an Essendon fan that's disappointed, you clearly haven't been supporting them for very long. Going to give a big loss to the Saints here as well. And the Saints does. What? They took the Giants to a point. That's, that, you're being very harsh. Sam Taylor went down. The Stephen Cornelio went down. The Saints nearly ran them off their legs. They were fantastic. No, they weren't. They kicked six goals, five in three quarters, playing boring, pedestrian, and stationary shitball footy. And then at three-quarter time, when the game's out of reach, and don't worry if I was doing this series earlier, Hawthorne last week would have copped the exact same treatment. So, as long as we leave it at that, and we're on the same page there, awesome, awesome, sweet, sweet, sweet. I am consistent, believe me. But no, you don't get to, on a dime, and Adelaide would also be in this conversation, by the way, you don't get to go, hey guys, <laughs> Funny story. Um, we're going to play some rebounding and attacking footy because we're no chance of winning this game with our plan A. Well, guess what? Your plan B is better than your plan A. That should be your plan A. Risk getting 80 kicked on you and try to kick 90. This whole 70 to 60 crap, or in this case, 70, uh, 80 to 79, I should say, isn't the way to win flags. Risk getting goals kicked on you to try to kick them. But Max King having four disposals is not the answer here, people. But 6-5 in three quarters, 6-2 in 25 minutes. If I'm a Saints fan, I'm pissed, royally pissed off that it took a 38-point deficit for them to figure out how to play football. It's bullshit. Going to give a massive tick to everyone at Marvel Stadium that got to watch this game live. Now, that's coming from a neutral, and it was mainly a Carlton-dominating crowd. I promise you that I'm not saying this to take the piss out of you, Carlton fans. I'm really not. It was one of those games that everyone except the most passionate of Carlton supporters could appreciate that it was an awesome game. If we could send a capsule to aliens, if you want to go down that path. I don't care about your belief either, by the way. It does not bother me in the slightest. This is a football conversation. Of how we want the game to look, 90% of it is this. If we could just get rid of the score reviews, we would be fine. Was Matty Always is touched a goal? Probably. Would it have won Carlton the game? No, because we don't know if the game continues in the same way. It probably doesn't. This game is full of variables. And also, there were six minutes to go in the third quarter. There was, at my recollection, 44 more minutes of football. Kick an extra goal, you win the game anyway. So, you know. Swings and roundabouts. But if you were in the crowd for this, this was awesome. And this is a game that I'll look on at the end of the year and think, I wish I lived closer to Melbourne so I could have just gone and watched this because it would have been sick. Given a big loss to Hawthorne here, we're fucking awful. Oh, don't like it when you swear, Daz. Eh, well, my videos haven't been doing great anyway, so if you're going to get offended at me swearing, good luck to you, really. But, um, yeah. What the fuck is going on with my football club? Uh, because the one thing that shouldn't be negotiable is effort. And when your five biggest Santa Bounce attendance players for the season do not get 15 disposals, any of them, you're in trouble. When you have a back line that is not that great, and lo and behold, it's not because James Blank went down. Now, he's an important part of our structure, don't get me wrong. But poor Jack Scrimshaw had about eight free kicks against him. And to be honest, I reckon about three of them weren't really there. Was that the reason we lost the game? Shit, no. We had 100 less disposals and 15 less tackles. 
And whoever at Hawthorne thought it was a good idea to put Josh Ward next to Matt Real, or maybe he's a wingman. He ain't a midfielder at all. And we don't have an A-grade midfielder currently. So, yeah. Hawthorne have got problems. To go up to Metricon Stadium and get absolutely mauled like that, it's not good enough at all. And I loved what Sam Mitchell said in his press conference. It doesn't make the fans feel any better, though. Going to give a loss here to Freo's front half, and I'm going to read you some stats just quickly. So Freo were plus 11 in contested ball and plus 9 in clearances. So they were winning the ball at the coalface, and they were taking territory from stoppage. Awesome. Why are you giving them a big loss here, Daz? <laughs> I'm glad you asked me. Uh, here's why. Um, because Freo went minus 10 in inside 50s, minus 11 in tackles inside 50, and minus 6 in marks inside 50. So when it got in there, they did nothing with it. So I don't really give a shit how well you defend. You can't score, you can't win. So piss off, Freo. Seriously. Can you tell I'm starting to get annoyed at these fraudulent teams? Is that coming through properly? I hope so. Uh, I'm going to give a big win here to Shannon Neal. Who, you might be asking, and I wouldn't really blame you all that much if you're not a Geelong supporter. Now, Jezza kicked six, and Brad Close did kick four, taking nothing away from them at all. Do they deserve wins? They probably do. But the thing about Shannon Neal that impressed me so much, apart from the fact that he kicked three goals, one, he had another two score involvements that didn't come off his boot, so for a big man, tick. Now, considering he's in a forward line with Tomahawk, who I know didn't play on the weekend, but around the club, and Jeremy Cameron, two guys who dominate the score involvements, goal assist stats, based off the average forward not at Geelong, those are still pretty good stats. And I think he took five marks uh, inside 50, or four marks, sorry, three of them were inside 50, and two of them were contested. Do you want to know what my favorite stat of his was? He laid five tackles inside 50. Just about what Freo did as a team. Well done, big boy. Well done indeed. And North, well, them v Hawthorne should be a blockbuster. But then again, two bad teams facing off against each other could lead to a good game. Hopefully. I'll be there. And finally, I'm going to give a big win to Adam Simpson and the West Coast Eagles here because, frankly, if we want to trash Simo, and it's been quite fun doing so, it kind of reminds me of when a lot of stand-up comedians would mock Trump before he became president, which I bet you didn't expect that to come up in this video, but it was like it was just funny to take the piss out of it until he became president. I know that comedians still did that, and look, people are still taking the piss out of West Coast now that they've won a game. And I'm going to divert away from the Trump talk now. But with West Coast, if we're going to trash them, when they win a game, we need to applaud them. I'm going to do that. They were awesome. Jake Waterman, fantastic. Elliot Yo, God footy so much better to watch when Elliot Yo is playing well. And Harley Reid is worth all the hype. All of my worry about the media pylon has not affected him one bit. How bloody good. And while we're at it, Richmond, you can take a loss as well. And do I really need to explain why? So they're my biggest winners and losers from the weekend. What do you guys think of this as a potential series? Comment below. Let me know. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to join the Daz Talks Footy family. Look after yourselves, you legends. And I'm bringing back a video that I haven't done for a while on Wednesday. So keep an eye out for a poll that should be dropping either when this video goes out or very, very shortly. And go and enact, uh, interact with that, I should say, and enjoy it. But until next time, stay safe, you absolute legends. Hope your team went well on the weekend. And if not, they'll do better this weekend unless you barrack for North. Goodbye.